Are you ready to see how I created this piece right here? Well, stay tuned because I'm gonna show you a time lapse of this painting, how I created it, my process, gain some insights and learn alongside me. I believe that art is truly for all. And if you're interested in anything art related, make sure you subscribe so you can learn alongside and be inspired. Let's get started. So my underpainting's already prepped with a grid and a sketch, so I'm ready to go. I also have a bit of a plan in my sketchbook with the colors that I'm gonna use already mixed a little bit. So I already know how to, I already have the recipe. So I'm just gonna mix the color that I want from my little planner. If you wanna know how to do that, go check out my other videos. I have one for the underpainting and I also have one that shows you kind of how to plan your piece. So you have greater success. So you know what colors you're creating. You're not gonna waste as much paint. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. It's gonna, if you've never done that, I encourage you to give it a try because it's not something I do for every painting, but after doing it this time, I'm definitely going to do it in the future because it just takes away some of that guesswork. So as you can see, I'm going in with kind of a middle darker tone and just going into areas where I'm going to get th things started, blocking it out. It doesn't have to be precise, but getting that kind of underlayer on there and not covering areas that are going to be lighter, like my really light toned areas. I'm not going to just cover the whole piece. Some paintings, it makes sense to do that where I just kind of paint the whole thing one tone and then go over it with lighter tones and everything. But for so this piece, I wanted to leave some of it showing. I think there's value to that with just the feel of this particular st like type of painting, the genre and everything. And there might be some areas where having some of that underpainting showing will be useful and make the painting more interesting too. Next up, I'm going in with darker tones. This might not be always the next step, but for this particular piece, it makes sense. And sometimes I go with my deepest tones first, but this painting, it just made sense to go kind of with that middle deep tone and then in with a darker tone. So just see what you think makes sense and give it a try. And it's not the end of the world if you chose the wrong what you think might, oh, maybe if I did it this way, it actually would have been better. Well, then you've learned for next time and that's okay. So I'm just going in all the areas where I have my darkest values. So you're finding the values. That's the main thing we're doing here. Adding in our various values. And yes, we're adding in color as well, but how you apply that color, where you're applying it depends on the values that we see throughout the piece. So yes, I'm going by a reference image to see what those values are, how light is it compared to others. You can even try black and white if you haven't tried that. Uh, it's very worthwhile exercise to kind of see, you know, where the brightest tones are. And actually just to see overall, is this picture really dynamic? Like, does it have really dark tones and really light tones? Or is it kind of just middle gray spectrum? You might want to try to help that, like improve it by either, you know, using Photoshop or something like that to make it more dynamic or just take note of that so you know where you're going to want to make some changes. Okay, next, let's get some fun color in there. I'm using a three quarter inch brush for this. I think it's wise to consider using a large, as large of a brush as you can in the starting stages of the painting. When I'm working on my eyes, I'm not going to use a massive brush. So just be sensible about it. But if you have large areas to cover, it makes more sense to, you know, cover it with a larger brush. You're going to, it's going to work faster. Your strokes will look a lot nicer too. You're going to have a lot more kind of smoother looking strokes. And um, unless you're doing some kind of pointillism piece, you know, maybe you want a smaller brush for that. But for this purpose, I'm, you can see how I cover a lot of ground more quickly with a larger brush. So that three quarter inch brush, working it as long as I can, 
before I need to get into kind of a smaller brush for smaller areas. So just do what makes, what you think makes sense. And maybe you don't know, but through trial and error, you'll find out. I'm going to go in with a lighter tone as well. Get that nose highlights in there. Find the brightest spot on the piece and put your lighter's tone and hue in those spots. I'm going to work a little texture on the nose so that we have that realistic kind of nose feel. You know, it has that like not super smooth look to it. it has a bit of a bumpy texture. And then just going in back in fourth, light tones, dark tones, depending on where you're at with the piece. So I'm currently using a half inch flat brush and this is serving me well for getting kind of not into the fine details yet, but some of those kind of mid, I meant that mid range point. I want to get more singular kind of strands in there that the three quarter inch couldn't do or wouldn't easily do. And I'm not quite ready for those tiny, you know, strands that the ink liner brush or script liner brush, sorry, <laughs> script liner brush will help me with. So kind of working with some mid tones, light tones, depending on the area to create and working the right direction. Make sure that the hairs are going in the correct direction according to whatever your subject matter might be. I like to stand when I paint so that I have more movement um, allowance with my hand. So this is a really neat type of technique I've seen recently that I'm like, I want to give this a go. So if you have a darker tone and then you go in with more transparent tones, then you can kind of create a neat kind of atmospheric type of dimensional look. And it's not the focal point of the piece, but it's so important. Those colors in there, the vibrancy, you know, there's this, obviously there's another cow next to this cow. It's not, it's not a fire. <laughs> it's another cow, but I do like that. It kind of has that feel, right? It's kind of like this super powerful um, color, those super cow colors, right? You have Superman, red and blue, right? You have these characters, Spider-Man, red and blue, <laughs> they're power colors. And so having that as, you know, the background is really making this kind of bluish toned, cool toned cow really pop. So as you can see, I'm adding in some really light tones now. I am layering with the white so that I can really make those areas where it's the brightest point really stand out. Also heard you can use white gesso. I know some people use white gesso as their white. Like, so instead of buying a titanium white, they use white gesso. I would like to try that and see how it works. I also, when I'm making marks that are small and if I make a little mistake, take a clean brush, have multiple brushes nearby so that you can kind of wipe it clean with a damp, clean brush. So now I'm going in with even brighter colors here. So I'm kind of mixing this electric blue in not totally covering things. So that's why I'm using my script liner brush, but making some areas really pop with it. And I'm using it with a bit of white as well to have some dimension, not just one color as some areas have kind of more of a grayish tone to them and others have this like vibrant blue. So just going in all the hairs where I need to have those colors. And sometimes I'm going off of my reference. I'm putting my reference away and I'm just having fun and looking at the piece and seeing what I feel needs to be done. And then I'll come back to my reference piece and then see if, if I'm totally off or if there's things that I can do to improve it um, with that reference image so that it looks more realistic that I'm following you know, the tonal values correctly so that I have this nice, you know, more realistic piece that looks, that looks a bit better. Sometimes our minds want to do something one way, but it doesn't actually make sense in reality. And so having that reference image helps. So I know where 
where are the lights actually hitting? Because there could be multiple light sources. So just getting those fine, fine tuning the details. These layers take time. Just be patient with yourself. Have fun with it. So yeah, I brought my reference image back in and I want to make sure that I'm really brightening up the areas where I should be. Getting those highlights in and it's super effective adding those highlights in around the nose area really makes a difference. These marks right now that I'm making. I have other brushes on hand if you need to make little kind of erase them. Don't wait for things to dry. If you wait for things to dry, you can't use that method to erase. Just working really loosely. I love how a script liner brush works to create realistic looking fur and hairs because you can make these kind of not just straight lines. You can do a nice curvy straight line, but you can see some hairs that kind of are wiry and it works so well for those. So individual hairs, it works really well to get those. And you always have to be reloading your brush using a thinner paint and and making sure that you don't have a glob of paint on your brush either because it could make a thick mark it's not only going to make thin marks it could make a thicker mark if you put too much paint on it so after i add this blue i want to go back in and add warmth back into it so while i was working I was just really into my painting and my camera battery died and I wanted to keep going. So I just kept going. So you're going to miss adding in the warmth, but I'm going to show you the end result for what it looks like after I add the warmth. It's a very similar process to what I'm doing now, but I'm just adding an, another dimension and some highlights as well around the ears for like more backlighting to give it, to really make it sing, really make it pop. So you can see I'm starting to add these kind of warm tones, kind of purpley tones. And then I just kind of brighten some of them up with a little bit of white. White doesn't necessarily brighten it per se. It takes away some of the vibrancy, but it helps it to make it pop on the canvas. So use it sparingly I suppose so you can see some of it I'm adding subtracting a little bit it just balances it really nicely it has a bit of a purpley tone to this kind of brown color that I'm adding in and I just think it adds that kind of balance it needed so you can see I added some more highlighting and really made those hairs just look like the light is just shining right behind the cow which is what I was going for and now it's complete I've signed it you can see a little close up and that's that well what did you think of the end result and about my process let me know in the comments if there's anything that you gained from watching this I hope you did and thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time bye now